This is my Chuck. I'm a student in Manhattan Hunter Science High School at Old Kids. And basically, my, pro my project or presentation will be on RT-PCR. Now, none of you know what that is, hopefully, but you will know at the end. Now, RT-PCR means reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction. Now, it's a very big mouthful, but I'm going to break it down for you later. And basically, it's used for detecting levels of gene expression and coding DNA. <laughs> Okay, now you heard DNA and gene expression, so first I'm going to tell you the transfer of genetic information from DNA to RNA and then to protein, which is basically has, it's very important in this process of RT-PCR, but I'm going to break it down for you, show you guys get it, move up steps, baby steps, and basically here's DNA, everything, DNA, and basically it's transcribed to RNA and then it's translated into proteins, and proteins can be expressed through phenotypes such as hair color, eye color, etc. And but also, they can also be expressed in diseases. Now, proteins can cause diseases by either being overexpressed or underexpressed. And this is where RT PCR <laughs> is used. Or basically, it'll reverse transcribe proteins that cause the illness from the RNA level back to DNA. And then after that, you're basically going through the process of PCR, which I'll break down for you later. I talk really fast. But basically, it's going to go through the process of PCR, which is going to break up the DNA, make many copies of it, and then you're going to find the specific gene that caused the illness, which over or underexpressed. Then after that, you're going to take that and put it in gel electrophoresis, like you saw Jane's presentation. But you're going to take the genetic information, and you're going to put it in a gel electrophoresis, and based on the intensity of the banding, you're going to see the intensity of the banding. You can see whether the gene was over or underexpressed, which caused the illness. <laughs> All right, now this is basically an exaggerated level of overexpressed proteins or underexpressed proteins. Now, in this case, you know, Down syndrome is caused by having an extra chromosome. And in this case, with having more proteins expressed, cause this illness. And this is also Turner syndrome, which having more, when having one, having one less chromosome, so there's going to be less proteins expressed, which cause this illness. So this is basically an exaggerated level showing how levels of proteins can affect and cause illnesses. So I'm just showing you an exaggerated level for now. Yeah. Wait. Right there. Right there? Yay! Okay. <laughs> it's used from RT PCR is used in DNA cloning. And you can use it for forward and reverse genetics. In forward genetics, you can sequence a gene and find through looking at its phenotype, but you can also take that specific gene, like say if it caused an illness, or if it caused for like dumbness or being stupid, you basically take that gene out, you <laughs> basically clone it, put it back in, and see if the person's normal. And then this is where genes can be discovered. No. No. Right. 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 Where did you arrow? Like the arrows, right? Now this is basically a deep, not you know it's a basic process of DNA cloning. But basically, you're gonna have the cell, and then you're gonna isolate the RNA. Like I said, you're gonna take the RNA, the protein from the RNA level. But you're gonna take the RNA from by its poly A cell, and I'll show you every strand of RNA that you have up. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna erase this so you guys know. This. Basically, say this is an RNA strand, and you have all the nucleotide bases from A, T, C, G, A, T, C, G, have anything, but basically all RNA has something called a poly A tail, which is basically a tail of A, basically, and you're going to isolate. Now, how are you going to get that RNA is you're going to use an OBODT primer, which is basically a long tail of the complementary nucleotide base called T. And this is how you're going to isolate that RNA. And then you're going to reverse transcribe it to DNA. And that's where you can use RT-PCR. And then you're going to take that gene after reverse transcribing the RNA to DNA. You can take that DNA. And basically, this is just a plasmid, which is basically the DNA of a bacteria cell. So you don't see the bacteria, so I'm just showing you the plasmid. But you're going to cut out a site of the DNA, and you put this DNA inside of it. So this way you're going to clone the DNA so that when the bacteria basically splits, it's going to replicate the DNA as well. And then you can isolate your DNA and then you have copies of the DNA. Alright. This is basically that's a step-by-step -step process of RT-PCR on the left, right here. 
On the right is basically, I'm going to get into that later, which is the future of RT-PCR, but this is RT-PCR in itself. We're basically going to start off with the reverse transcription of the RNA, which is going to go to DNA, and then you have the PCR reaction, which I'll break down later. And then you could transfer needed the, the DNA needed for the reaction. Then you could go to gel electrophoresis to see if the protein gene was over or underexpressed by the banding. And then basically you sequence the gene to see which specific gene caused the illness. And now I'm going to break down RT-PCR. Now this is the RT portion of RT-PCR, which is reverse transcriptase. And reverse transcriptase is an enzyme which isn't found in the human body. It's actually found in the HIV retrovirus. And basically, this is what helps the HIV retrovirus be so dangerous. Is that say this is a human cell, a host cell, when it goes into that host cell, it's gonna go into the it's gonna go basically into the nucleus and it's gonna reverse transcribe its own RNA into DNA and put its DNA into that gel that into that cell's genome. So then when the cell divides, it's gonna create more of that HIV in that body. So that's dangerous. But basically we're using that specific enzyme that reverse transcribes in our process. And this is the PCR portion. And PCR is basically, it creates copies of the DNA. So basically the first part was RT, which is the reverse transcribing of the RNA to C DNA. And then that's gonna create many copies, like a copy machine, of the DNA, so there are many DNAs. Now first, what started out, it actually RT didn't come about before PCR, it was actually PCR that started. Now PCR was, it was basically came about from this man called, named Art Perry Mewis, who is a researcher in a lab and basically created a new way, he created PCR, which is a more efficient way of replicating DNA, which before what they would do is that, like I said, DNA cloning, they would take the gene, put it in E. coli or bacteria and wait for it to, to basically split, split to replicate the DNA, and this was a long process. So his process of PCR really revolutionized that and made it more efficient. And this is basically his whole life. Where he was born December 28, 1944, and he went from colleges for chemistry, biochemistry, pharmaceutical chemistry, until he got to CITES labs. And it was here that he came up with the idea of PCR, because he was working with polymerase, which polymerase is an enzyme that helps to create and copy DNA. And he also used, he synthesized nucleotides, which is ATCG. He made the nucleotides, and he came up with the process there in that laboratory in 1979. But he wasn't given recognition until 1993, where he was given the Nobel Prize for it. And here is the detailed mechanism of PCR. Now PCR, the first step, once you have that gene, basically you have the DNA, after you have the RNA and you reverse transcribe it to the DNA, you have this DNA, you're gonna put it in a buffer, which I'll break down for you what, uh, what else is in the buffer, it's a surprise, I'll tell you. But you have, you're gonna put it in the buffer and then you're gonna heat it. And you're gonna heat it, which will split up the DNA. Then after splitting the DNA, you're gonna do primer annealing, which is basically you're taking specific, you're taking um, primer specific to the DNA strands, which you're gonna attach to opposite ends of the DNA, and which is gonna prepare it to create two new DNA strands. So as you see, we're already starting to create two new DNA strands. And then here's extension. And then here, that basically TAC polymerase is gonna work with other nucleotides that are basically free roaming in the buffer, and it's gonna take it and create two new DNA strands, which already they're copies of each other exactly. And then here, after this, you're gonna do replication, you get amplifiers, and you create even more copies. And so this is the, the basically the copy machine step. So you're basically creating so many copies of DNA. And then you can sequence the gene that caused the protein, and then you can put it in gel electrophoresis, see if it's over or under stress. 